The first scripture reading today is from Hebrews chapter 11. How much more do I need to say? It would take too long to recount the stories of the faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and all the prophets. By faith, these people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, and received what God had promised them. They shut the mouths of lions, quenched the flames of fire, and escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength. They became strong in battle and put whole armies to flight. Women received their loved ones back again from death. But others were tortured, refusing to turn from God in order to be set free. They placed their hope in a better life after the resurrection. Some were jeered at and their backs were cut open with whips. Others were chained in prisons. Some died by stoning, some were sawed in half, and others were killed with the sword. Some went about wearing skins of sheep and goats, destitute and oppressed and mistreated. They were too good for this world, wandering over deserts and mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. All these people earned a good reputation because of their faith. Yet none of them received all that God had promised. For God had something better in mind for us, so that they would not reach perfection without us. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge uh, crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. Let us run with endurance the race God has set before us, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. And from Matthew chapter 5, You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, the lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your Heavenly Father. There is a reason you are here today. And it's not all because of All Saints Day. I believe that the reason we are here today is because someone shone the light of Jesus' love and grace into our lives. <laughs> okay, there we go. We'll quit the echo there. <laughs> but I truly believe that we are here because somebody has shown or is shining the light of Jesus into our lives. We are not born inherently knowing the love of Jesus for us. It might be down in there maybe somewhere, and I know there are stories of people who have come to faith without anybody around them, but for the majority of us, we have faith in Jesus because somebody else who had faith in Jesus shared that love with us. God decided that that message of love and grace was to be passed down from generation to generation to generation. And if you think about it, there really is no backup plan to that. We, the, I, as far as we know, God doesn't have, you know, plan B hanging off to the side here. For thousands of years, the plan is you experience the love of Jesus, you share the love of Jesus. And if we, we realize that, as we realize that, then we can also realize that really, Christianity is only one or two generations, constantly, only one or two generations away from being extinct. If all of us who know the love of Jesus worldwide stopped sharing the love of Jesus, the love of Jesus, the knowledge of that, the feeling of that, there would be millions of people that don't know. Think about that. And as you think about that, ask yourself this. 
what kind of Jesus am I shining into the world? I want you to think about that. But I also want us to back up a minute. Because before we really go there, I want to ask you this. Who have been the witnesses of Jesus' light and love in your lives? Now I'm going to do something a little different today. I'm going to let you help tell today's message. And Ellery's going to, Ellery and Jim are going to help me. And um, they have microphones, and, and here's the rules. They're going to hold the microphone. You aren't allowed to take it from them. All right? We've been given, they've given them strict instructions. They'll hold it. You speak into it. But think back to that question. Who has shown the light and love of Jesus into your lives? Now, what Jim and Ellery are going to do is they're going to come down in amongst you. And... Um, this is a real question with real answers. So if you raise your hand, then you simply you share the person's name, their relationship to you, and the Reader's Digest version of how they shone their light into your life. All right, because we want to let many people have, have a chance at this. So, um, so the Reader's Digest version, right? So who are the people who have shown Jesus' light and love into your lives? Who, do you, who came to mind? Raise your hand and one of our, our microphones will come to you. All right, there we go. Nope, you can't grab it. Um, my great-grandmother, Marvel Lindy. Awesome, thank you. Others, who are the people who have shown Jesus' light and love into your life? There's one all the way back there, Ellery. Uh, my grandfather, Charles Lewis, he was a uh, Baptist minister, and he walked and talked Jesus every day and helped me. Awesome. Thanks, Jane. Others, who's somebody who has shown the light and love of Jesus in your life? <laughs> Climbing over chairs. Um, my dad, Alan, um, he opened up our home um, and just you know, invited people to come and join us for meals, whatever, and um, always wanted to share Jesus' love. Awesome. Thanks, Kristen. All right, others, who shines Jesus' light and love into your life? My mother-in-law, Marietta, has just shown it so much with her acceptance of people who have different beliefs and different walks. Awesome. Thanks, Allie. My youth group leaders uh, in Rochester, New York, Don and Jean Brick, who uh, allowed me to, and, and all, of, all of us uh, kids, to really live faith and, uh, and accept it as our own. It was no longer my parents' faith. It, uh, it was my own, treating us like adults at a younger age. Awesome. Thank you, Peter. Oh, there's one back there, really. My mom, Ruth, who's sitting next to me. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Betty. Thanks for sharing. So people at home can hear you. Yep. All right. My best friend in high school, Terry, went from being like the biggest high school party girl to proclaiming Jesus overnight. Hmm. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Others. Oh. There, go ahead. Uh, Billy Tarr, who is the secretary of my church, who continues to be my oldest friend that I've ever had. Awesome. Thanks. My parents, Roland and Julie, born and raised a Lutheran. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Linda. Others, who are the people in your lives? Here, Ellie. Ellie, Kathy's right down. My best friend when I was a child, Sally, and her family, is they let me come with Sally to summer camp for a week at Pattersonville, Camp Pattersonville in upstate New York, even when I had a broken arm. <laughs> awesome. Then right, right in front of you, Ellery. Kathy, right there. There you go. My mom, Carol, sitting next to me. Who she and my dad examples of uh, shining the light of Jesus. Awesome. There's. All right, coming around. My uh, uncle uh, Bob and uh, Joanne Curl, and uh, really was seeing. Uh, their relationship blossomed by uh, their love of Jesus that really affected me. Awesome. 
Thank you. Drew? Uh, a friend, uh, Rob Olson, when I was in elementary school, invited me to a summer Christian camp, and I just remember that being a pivotal moment in my, in my journey. Great. Thanks for sharing. Uh, okay. Someone Mencia. younger, my daughter, Isabella Cole, who has always shown love, patience, kindness, and uh, graciousness to me. Awesome. Thanks, Mencia. Others? Who has been? All right. All, there's Mary all the way back there, and there's Linda right here. This and this. Oh, you got somebody there too. Okay, go ahead. You go, Jim. Ellery, you go back and catch Mary back by the booth. There we go, and we'll catch Linda on the way up. Okay, my parents, Dwayne and Arlene. Um, Mom was the organist at church forever, and Dad was the Sunday school superintendent as long as I was there. And Dad too. If there was a car on the side of the road, we had to stop. <laughs> and um, I don't, but he did. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Laura. My first grade teacher, Sister Ray Pedra, who is first one else. Awesome. Thank you, Mary. And Linda, oh, go ahead. Uh, uh, I acknowledge my men's group that I meet with every Tuesday morning uh, here at Faith or online. And they really show me the love of Jesus. Awesome. Pastor Paul Gilbertson, who was the pastor when I was in confirmation. And we didn't go start going to church until right before confirmation. He was really influential. Mm. Cool. Thank you, Linda. All right. Anybody else? Okay. Got him over there. Uh, my mom, Sally, who kept us in the same church for 30 years and served in every asset from camp uh, council to leading the children's program to singing and choir. Awesome. All right. Yep. Amy. This congregation with the, with the motto of being the hands, feet, and voice mm -hmm. of Jesus in the world. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. Oh, there, there's another Linda back there, Ellery. <laughs> My father, Joseph Maddy, and my great, uh, my grandmother-in-law, uh, Frances Jones, who neither one ever said a bad thing about anyone. All right. Awesome. All right. Anybody else? Oh. Oh, there you go. Karen's right there. We'll get, we'll get you, Denise. Uh, my parents, uh, John and Lydia Nordberg, uh, brought me up in a church. And, uh, Love Jesus. Thanks. Thank you, Karen. And right here, Denise. My coworker, LaVon Sorensen, when I was a young adult, I had broken away from the church, and she showed me the love and grace and mercy of Jesus. Awesome. Thanks. All right, last call. You know, right. I happen to know that Jane, um, when she writes the sermon, I get a preview of it. It helps me pick music. And, and she actually had standby stories. How cool that we didn't even need standby <laughs> That's stories. That's right. You're still going to hear some of them, but. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that is like amazing. Yeah, it is. Super Thanks, Ellery. You can put your microphone back up there. Thank you all for sharing. It is amazing the ways that God's light and love are sh shown into our lives. I, I have down here example. I was going to give you an example before um, I let you all talk, and, and I forgot to do it, but so I'm going to share it now. Um, this is in a very different way, but Sherry Bile, while I was recovering from surgery, called me one day, and she said, I know you probably have more than enough food in your refrigerator now, and um, so is there another way? And Sherry um, is a daughter-in-law of Jane and Case back there, but she's also one of our preschool moms. And, um, and I said, well, okay, this seems really dumb, but my backyard is all paver stone. It's not very big. It's all paver stone. And, um, and the weeds grow like nobody's business in between them. And so I said to her, well, you're right. I have more than enough food in my refrigerator. But honestly, the weeds in my backyard are just driving me out of my mind because I can't reach over and, and pull them out. And she's like, great, I'll come over. And she came over and she spent about an hour and a half in my little backyard. And there isn't a weed to be seen. 
And it seems like a small thing, but at a time when I couldn't do that for myself, to have her go, oh, this is fine. And, um, and she came over and she did it. And uh, every time I look back there and there's not a weed in sight, I'm like, that is the love of Jesus being shown in my life. All right? I have a friend, Pastor Nicole, who has taught me, who, she just radiates the love of Jesus all the time. And she taught me this phrase, perhaps they're not living into their full potential at the moment. Or perhaps it is not living into its full potential at the moment. And it's a way of saying, well, things aren't exactly right, but there's huge potential, right? And so um, I love the way that she always sees that things could be better. And you know, you've heard about me talk about my family. And so, you know, they're in there too. But um, I also have a friend, Tanya, that I don't know that she would call herself a Christian today or a Jesus follower, but she lives Jesus' compassion and laughter into my life and into the lives of so many others in her work as a therapist. And as a friend outside of the church world, she is a beautiful light in my world. And then I don't want to leave this out, and somebody else, Mencia, um, pointed this out to us by um, sharing about her daughter Man or Isabella. But the people who shine the light and love of Jesus into our lives do not always have to be older than we are. Like, and I asked, I asked permission to share these. Um, but Ellery, Ellery asks the most fabulous questions about faith. Things like, did Jonah really sit for three days in the belly of a whale, because that's kind of gross. And, but we had this great, deep, theological conversation about that. And she brings questions to me all the time. And I love the way, Ellery, that your brain works. And, um, and so you keep asking questions. And uh, Hannah and Harrison, who are down here, they, um, they often draw things for me. I have th um, things hanging on my refrigerator and hang things, hang pictures in my office because they have um, drawn for me and I always get hugs from them and that makes my day. If you guys don't know that, Harrison and Hannah, you make my day. Or little Sam Rainsma, um, he's what, four? Four. He's four. And the first time that he got to receive communion. Like, I wish you had a picture of that child's face because it just beamed that he got to have that piece of bread and dip that bread into the wine with the rest of the family. That is the light and love of Jesus. We sit, or excuse me, our lives are meant to be lives of witness. And so I go back to the question that I asked before, what are we witnessing to? Or who are we witnessing to? We sit in a time of great angst right now and heightened emotions throughout our country. And it can feel like this is a do or die kind of moment when you think about the political world that we are making our way through. And in the midst of all of this, what Jesus are you being a witness for? We can put our trust, or not, in governments and political candidates, but we have, as followers of Jesus, if we claim the name Jesus, we have a higher authority than any government or political candidate, we have a higher authority that calls us to a life that places our ultimate trust in a creator, redeemer, and empowerer. Ultimately, our lives, if we say we follow Jesus, belong to Jesus. Come what may. I want to hear that again. If we claim we follow Jesus, our lives belong to Jesus, come what may. 
there are two really key points in today's scripture that I don't want us to, to just kind of gloss over. First, the Hebrews text. Paul read that beautifully. He named all kinds of people, right? And we, we get those lists of like all the people and all the things that happened to them, good and bad, and we just kind of let it wash over us. But there's a really important set of sentences at the end of that text, and I'm going to read them again for you. And I want you to listen carefully. All these people, all the people that we just talked about, and, and Paul just read a snippet, like the whole chapter of Hebrews 11 is this like telling of all these people who lived by faith. And so at the end, then the writer says, all these people earned a good reputation because of their faith, yet none of them received all that God had promised. For God had something in be better in mind for us so that they would not reach perfection without us. It's not that we're trying to be as good as they were. Their story is not complete without our stories. Their walks of faith are not complete without our walks of faith. And so then the writer goes on, therefore, since we are a part of this, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us Strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. And we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. That's a whole lot more words saying we belong to Jesus. And so our walks, our runs, our graces are with and for Jesus. And then the second piece is from Matthew. And we say this every single time we baptize someone, right? Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Right? Don't miss this call to witnesshood. You want the children in our midst to know and love Jesus? Then we each have a huge responsibility for making sure that happens. Not just parents. Parents, you have a very specific task in that. But you are, these families are surrounded by this huge crowd of witnesses. Let us not forget that we were not created, saved, called, and sent to simply consume the love of Jesus. But we are created, saved, called, and sent to make sure the world knows the love of Jesus. Knows that the grave of this world is not the end. Knows that the strife of this world is not all there is. That the forces of evil and the power of greed don't ultimately win. Jesus does. So I ask you again. Who or what are you witnessing for today? Your answer to that question, I believe, is a huge indicator of how you might experience or not experience the abundant life that Jesus has for us. Who and what or what are you witnessing for today? Will you pray with me? Jesus, I stand here this morning abundantly aware that I don't stand here on my own. But I stand here first and foremost because of you and then because of all of the witnesses who have shown your light and love in my life. The various ages and places and times where your light has been shown through so many people 
And on this day when we, we tend to think perhaps of the separation that we have from some of those people. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will open our eyes not to forget those who have already gone, but hold them close in our hearts and see the people who are being witnesses for you in the world today. And then stir up in us the courage and the vision to be a part of that great cloud of witnesses until the day comes when either you come back, Jesus, or every soul knows your love for them. Keep us <clears throat> to that task. Keep us to that purpose. Create in us that vision. Pray all this in your name and power, Jesus. Amen.